Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about self-induction and uh, this lecture is about a couple of very, very simple problems related to self-induction. <coughs> now, self-induction is actually a very practical issue, primarily because when you are disconnect something, your um, self-induction works against reducing the current, which means it's trying to um, increase the current and uh, that's why we have sparks whenever you're turning off the electricity and in some cases uh, self-induction might be really really um, large and uh, it might actually damage certain electrical equipment so we have to really know how to calculate the value of this self-induction so I consider a very simple setting where we will just calculate this particular value of self-induction and then the second problem will be about the current which is the result of self-induction okay so here is the problem um, the problem is the following setting um, you have a wire loop it's connected to switch and the battery so plus minus now switch is on off switch now our purpose is to basically calculate what happens uh, with self-induction in this case and then the second problem will be about the current okay so this is the setting now this lecture is part of the physics 14 course presented on unizor.com um, I suggest you to basically take a look at the website unizor.com because the whole course is presented there because there are in the interdependencies between lectures in this lecture for instance I will be using something which I was presenting in the previous lecture so I do suggest you to take the course and there is a prerequisite course called physic, uh, to, to physics for teens. it's called math for teen, for teens and uh, it's on the same website it's free all courses are free no no strings attached so I suggest you to basically take the whole course and maybe even both courses math for teens and physics for teens all right so let's talk about this particular problem and let's go into conditions whatever we have well first of all we have this battery and let's assume that it produced certain voltage u0 so that's original primary EMF primary electromotive force in this circuit now under normal circumstances the uh, resistance of this circle is R0 so if the switch is on uh, battery is working current is working everything is fine uh, basically U0 is your uh, um, voltage R0 is your resistance and I0 is according to the Ohm's law that's your current now that's when everything is settled but I'm interested in the moment of turning the switch on and off what happens in these cases well we will consider a specific model what does it mean that I'm turning the switch on and off in mathematical um, uh, from mathematical position well, when it's off, I can assume that resistance of the whole circuit is equal to, well, basically infinity, right? There is no current, so I, I assume that whenever it's off, it's infinity. Whenever it's on, resistance is R0. So, during the time I'm switching on, my resistance is changing from infinity to certain value R0 
Now let's assume that from purely mechanical standpoint, the contact, the time between no electricity and, and there is electricity, it's a very small actually interval of time obviously. Um, it, 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 this, ti this time interval is equal to t. So during the time t, my resistance is reduced from infinity to R0 whenever I am turning the switch on. Whenever I'm turning the switch off, resistance is turning backwards from R0 to infinity. Now, that means that actually resistance is a function of time. Right? Now, time is changing on interval from zero to time t. So, from um, t is equal to zero to t is equal to uh, capital T, my resistance is changing when I'm switching on from infinity to R0, when I'm switching off from R0 to infinity. Okay, that's, you know, we are trying to put some mathematics into this purely uh, physical world. Well, it would be nice if I can express it as a formula, right? Because R, t, R of t is a function, so functions should have certain uh, relatively, preferably simple way. Well, I can come up with a very simple function, which does exactly what I was talking about. Now, if it's on, uh, that's R0 times T divided by T. If T is equal to 0, that's denominator, the whole thing is infinity. If t is equal to, and then as t is growing from zero to capital T, um, my expression is, it's a hyperbola, right? It goes this way. It's diminishing from infinity to certain fixed value at lowercase t is equal to capital T. Now that will be t divided by t1, so it will be zero, r0 at, at t equals to t, right? So that's a simple formula. Now for off, there is practically the same simple formula. Again, if t is equal to 0, I have t divided by t, it's 1, so r0. As t is increasing to t, capital T, the denominator goes to uh, zero, so the whole thing goes to infinity. So these two functions in my specific problem describe how my turning on and off actually is happening. It's basically changing a resistance of the whole circuit between zero, b between um, infinity and, uh, and R0. Now, is it the same how it really happens in practice? Well, I can tell you a very honest opinion, I have no idea. But it seems to be that, at least approximately, and that's what physics actually is, we cannot really know what exactly is happening in nature, but we can approximate it, and our approximation are supposed to be reasonable. So I think it's a reasonable approximation, that's all I'm saying. Well, maybe it's not just this type of proportion. I mean, there are many functions which go from infinity to certain fixed value. Well, there is a logarithmic, for instance, function, or there are many others, or tangent, who knows? Um, but anyway, for simplicity purposes, it's good enough. Okay, so I know how the resistance is changing in time. Well, if I know that, and I know my original, my primary voltage on the battery, I can come up with change of the current. Now, why do I need the current? Well, I need the current, how it's changed, because I have to know how the um, magnetic field intensity 
is changing because intensity depends on the current. If current is changing, intensity is changing. If intensity is changing, the flux, magnetic flux going through this loop is changing. And that's exactly what's causing the uh, self-induction. So as soon as magnetic flux is changing, it generates extra EMF, the indu induced EMF, self-induced even EMF. And that's what we are interested in, right? So we need to know what is the induced EMF in this case. So again, to get the induced EMF, we have to know how the flux is changing. Magnetic flux depends on the intensity of magnetic field and the area of this loop. Well, area is constant, so magnetic field intensity is changing. How? Because of the current is changing. Why current is changing? Because the resistance is changing. So that's a very simple three or four steps which we have to make. Okay, so let's consider on. Whenever we are turning on the, um, the switch, what happens? I know R of T, so I can say that current, which is equal to my voltage divided by R of T, equals to what? It's equal to voltage. R of T is this. times t. Now, this is variable. You see, it depends on t. If t is equal to zero, my current is equal to zero because the switch is not turned on, right? As t is increasing, my current also increases. And at t is equal to capital T, my current is equal to nominal current, whatever this particular circuit is um, basically de developed for. Okay, now, I of T current is changing. Well, now, if there is a current in the loop, we know there is a magnetic field, and you understand that magnetic field goes something like around it. Well, obviously, the direction depends on the direction of current. There is a right-hand rule, etc. It doesn't really matter right now. So there is a magnetic field, and inside this loop, it goes perpendicularly to the surface of the board, right? Now, what is um, the value of the magnetic field intensity inside this thing? Now, in the center, we have already calculated in one of the previous lectures. Whenever we were talking about uh, magnetism of current in a loop, I think that was the name of the lecture, we basically calculated, it's a very simple integration uh, problem, um, and uh, the result was that B of... Now, I put the dependency on the time because uh, current depends on the time. It's equal to mu zero I of T divided by 2 R, right? Where R is radius. Now, I have calculated this in the center of the loop. Now let me make another assumption that if I will go to any other place, it will be the same. Well, it's a stretch, to tell you the truth. But it's a reasonable stretch. I mean, we can go into math and basically try to calculate what exactly the magnetic field intensity at each point inside based on the laws um, which we were using before. And one of the, uh, so, well, the main law which we will be using in this particular case is the dependency of Uh, if this is the current, and this is infinitesimal um, area, uh, let's put it ds, of the current, then the magnetic field intensity at this point 
depends basically on the current and on this angle. So we can obviously calculate it. Now, in case of the center, the current is always perpendicular um, to the radius to the point uh, to, to the radius to the center. So there is always perpendicularity here. So it's easy. If it's not in the center, it's not that easy. But again, we can go through calculations and we can show that it's maybe equal, maybe very close. In some ideal case, maybe it's even equal. I'm not sure it's really not very easy to do. And I prefer basically, okay, let's just assume that the magnetic field intensity at every point is the same. Without the proof, it's just an assumption. And quite frankly, I just don't know if it's a true assumption. It looks like at least approximately true. Maybe it's true 100%. I don't know. And I didn't go through exercise of integration and uh, basically finding out exactly. But let's assume. Now, so this is magne magnetic field intensity at every point inside this loop. So it's basically at any moment of time, I can always calculate the magnetic field flux which goes through this loop. Flux is a, a product of intensity and the area of the loop in this particular case. So my flux, which is also a function of t, is equal to my magnetic field intensity times area of the circle, pi r square. OK, so that's equal to uh, mu zero i of t I will put this which is u zero t divided by r zero t times two r and times pi r square. Well r will so it will be pi r. Am I right? Let me check. Pi mu zero u t r t. Okay, fine. That's what it is. Now, since I know the magnetic flux, I can basically determine very easily my um, induced EMF. If you remember, induced EMF, I will use it u i, i for induced it's equal to minus first derivative of the flux by time. So it's a rate of change of the flux. So if flux is changing, there is an induced EMF. If flux is not a function of t, if, if flux is constant, then there is no induced EMF. So whenever this uh, switch is on, after the time, after the time t, when it's really solid on, we have a direct current which is constant, which is equal to this one. If it's a constant direct current, there is no dependency on time in the magnetic field intensity, and there is no dependency on time here with magnetic flux, and derivative would be zero, so there will be no, no induced EMF. So induced EMF generates, is, is generated only during this relatively small interval of time when the switch is really turning on, not, in, not, not yet turned completely. So this minuscule amount of time, it's like 10 to minus whatever degree of second, um, this thing is happening. And then it doesn't really happen anymore. Well, in this case, since I have assumed a relatively simple dependency of the resistance by time, I have a relatively simple function. Dependency on t is basically a linear dependency, and all I have to do is just to take a derivative from the linear function, and this is definitely minus mu zero pi uh, u zero r divided by 2 r0 t.
I just changed the sequence. And this is my, my, my induced EMF. Now, the switch is turning on. My, reduced, my induced EMF is negative. It's reducing the original EMF. So, whenever I'm trying to increase the um, current in the, uh, in the circuit, my induced EMF works against my primary one it doesn't really let me to increase as fast as it probably would be okay so this is my induced EMF for the case when I'm turning the switch on okay now let's go and turn to the switching off situation what happens in this case well, in this case, RFT is slightly different, right? Now, if RFT is slightly different, my current would have, instead of this, it will have this. Now, my magnetic field intensity is this, my flux is this, so all I have to do, I have to change this. to T minus T. And what happens with my derivative? Well, I have to multiply by derivative of the uh, inner function, which is T minus T, and the uh, derivative is minus 1, so in this particular case I have plus. So the absolute value when I'm switching off is exactly the same as when I'm switching on but it's positive which means when I'm trying to reduce the current my induced MF is trying to bump it up it prevents actually to, re to, to reduce the current to zero which means it's just it prolongs the uh, this agony of uh, electric current whenever it's basically dying it's trying to prolong it a little bit more, put some more life in it. Question is how much life? We don't want that to be too much because then it would overload our electric uh, equipment, whichever, but whatever is on this circuit, right? And that would be the subject of my second problem. So the first problem is done, basically. We have this expression as the magnetic um, as the induced EMF produced by switching off and on. If on, it's negative. It's, 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 if it's off, it's positive. Now I have to use this, all these calculations somehow, for basically determining um, how strong that induced EMF actually is. Now, my purpose is not to overload the, the circuit. So my second problem is the following. I would like to know, now by the way, you have to really understand that if T is small, the smaller T is, let's put it this way, the, the bigger EMF, induced EMF is generated. So the shorter my um, time when the switch is turning off, and off is actually more important than on, because on we are just reducing the current, but on we are increasing the current. So that's dangerous. So if my T is very small, then this thing might be very big. So the more abruptly, the, the, the faster I'm switching off, the greater EMF uh, is induced EMF is really developed in the circuit. So that's why it's very important, especially in cases when you have really large loads and big voltage, etc., etc. Big voltage, you see, if voltage is very big, that might actually be a problem. Um, so it's very important to reduce uh, this current slowly.
So it's not just abruptly uh, cut off the electricity. It would be nice if you are gradually do this. That's why on the very large installations, whenever you have switches, large I mean in terms of current it consumes, whenever you have these switches, switches are not really like electric switch you have in a room. They are really very, very slowly changing um, the uh, current down to zero when you're switching off to prevent sudden growth in um, uh, in the edu in induced EMF. And um, that's why whenever there is some kind of a, um, I don't know, breakage in electrical equipment on in big installations, that's dangerous for all the um, uh, electrical equipment because the current might actually have a spike and spike might kill actually the electric equipment. So my purpose is, what is the minimum T when it's really safe? Now, what does it mean safe? Well, that's just my definition of safe. So I would like I of T to be less than or equal to um, 1.1 times my nominal T. So nominal T is what the circuit is basically developed for. I don't want more than 10% increase. So it's 1.1 multiplied by this nominal. I don't want I of T to, 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 to exceed this value. So question is, what is my minimum T? My mi minimum time during which I am switching to satisfy this condition. Okay, so basically we have to find out the T when this is equal to 1.1 uh, of I0. But not this one, I'm sorry, that's the electromotive force. So we need the total voltage. This is the total voltage, right? The original plus uh, induced. And this is the constant, by the way. It doesn't depend on, on time. This induced EMF depends only on these parameters, which are constant. So this is my total voltage. If I will divide it by resistance, I will get my real current in the um, in the circuit, right? Okay. So, what I have to do is, I have to basically make sure that this is, so I have to basically resolve this u0 plus ui divided by r of t it's equal to 1.1 times u0 divided by r0 so I have to put whatever the values are and resolve it for t for capital T right so instead of r of t I have to put R zero T here um, well in this particular case I'm interested only okay let let let's think about it this way since my total voltage induced plus original is constant when the current will be the maximum when the resistance will be the minimum right now when we are switching off my resistance is growing from basically original value r0 to infinity so when it's minimum when in the very beginning at time t is equal to zero at the time t, t equals to zero my resistance is smaller that's why my current will be the bigger so instead of um, 
divided this divided this to r of t it's better to divide it by r of 0 because r of 0 is always less than r of t we are switching off so in the very beginning r0 is the maximum value and then it's increasing so my maximum my spike is in the very beginning so I basically have to divide it by r of 0 which is equal to r0 if t is equal to 0 that would be r0 so this is an equation so let's just substitute proper ui so we have u0 plus ui is this one mu pi mu0 pi u0 r divided by 2 r0 t okay now I can safely reduce both sides equals to 1.1 u0 now this is 1.1 which means I can subtract one of them and have 0 0.1 right and this is very simple to resolve by t uh, t is equal to t is equal to mu um, 0 pi u0 is also cancelling out right r divided by well 0 0.1 goes here and t goes there so it's 0 0.2 r0 I think that's where it is let me check by 0 yes correct so this is the minimum value uh, during which my switch should work if I don't want to exceed 10% of the original uh, current so it depends basically only on the um, initial resistance of the circuit and the radius of this loop well that's what it is this is a test t minimum it should be at least this or greater if it's greater it would be slower um, uh, slower process less uh, EMF would be induced now as far as what exactly this value is um, now you know that every lecture on unizor.com has comments notes whatever it's like a textbook basically whatever I'm saying right now is presented uh, in a textual format and I ended up with some calculation for some practical numbers and for those practical numbers I mean real practical numbers I've got t minimum approximately 10 to the minus 8 of a second which is a very very small value so that's the minimum value now most of the uh, switches which manufactured you know for regular purposes are not as fast um, now at least the smaller ones maybe really are something on this level but they don't really generate big big spikes and the bigger ones are designed specifically to do it slowly so it's definitely time is greater and that prevents destructive spikes in the current so if you will, if you read the notes for this lecture which I always recommend you to do um, you will see what kind of a practical values I substitute for these numbers uh, mu is a very small actually thing and these are just got something whatever seemed to be reasonable to me alright so that's it for today uh, thank you very much I recommend you to 
again recommended to take the whole course and even start with the math routines. But this lecture, um, read the notes. It's very um, interesting to read again whatever you have, you know, listened to um, once and uh, and pay attention to uh, these numbers, the calculation. They're kind of educational. All right. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>